like them. Hello and welcome. I am Justine Comley with AARP North Florida. And I'm Linda Levin, CEO of Elder Source, the Area Agency on Aging and Aging and Disability Resource Center for Northeast Florida. And you are watching Let's Do Lunch, a monthly virtual event in Jack with Jacksonville AARP and Elder Source. And for the last four months, we've done a program uh, with many different uh, experts and have had conversations uh, with uh, around Medicare and how not to get scammed, how to bring joy to your life through art, the importance of participating in the census and voting. And so with that, we have had a great four months. And so you can find any of these events at the AARP or Elder Source Facebook page. And we encourage you to do that. Thank you, Justine. And boy, we do have a lot to share today, too. So everyone is on any given day is feeling stress, whether it's work life balance or as a caregiver or whatever else brings stress to your life. And then we add in the pandemic which has a whole nother layer of stressful issues for all of us, worrying about our health, worrying about our loved ones, and will everybody be okay? And now we're approaching the holidays. And under normal conditions, holidays could be stressful, but under today's conditions, probably even more so. So today we're gonna talk to you about how to take care of yourself or self-care. And so get ready, here we go. Thanks, Linda, for that. And uh, today, our guest is Sonia Kihata, the owner of Q Wellness, and she's an expert in wellness coaching, yoga, and meditation. And Sonia is an Army veteran who has had her mini share of multi, uh, muscular dis, musculoskeletal injuries along the way and found that the uh, adaptive yoga, yoga has really helped her with her chronic pain and mobility. And today you are in for a treat. And with that, we welcome you, Sonia. Thank Thank you. I I am excited to be here. Thank you for that. Yes, I uh, received one of my first major injuries as a young paratrooper at the age of 22. And so it has been, I'm now 54. So it's been over 30 years that I have uh, lived Mm. with uh, pain and physical limitations. And that was just my first injury. I mean, when you're a paratrooper, you get quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what happens in the tactical operational military world. So uh, it was actually one of my physical therapists and my orthopedic surgeon who recommended that I try yoga as a regular daily practice to keep my body moving Uh, to allow the muscles and the bones to explore their range of motion, to grow in their strength, endurance, and in mobility for functional fitness. And we know that as we age, right? Our our orthopedic doctors or our our general providers or our rheumatologists, if we have arthritis, will remind us that if we don't use it, we lose it. We have to move our bodies. We have to explore the range of motion. We have to let the muscles do their jobs. And uh, there's another a little uh, quip that I like that says, motion is lotion. When we feel achy, when we feel stiff, and we don't feel like moving at all, that's actually when we need to move more. Uh, because it's with, it's with movement, with motion, that the... Uh, lubrication happens with our joints and with our bones and our connective tissue and that's what we need. So um, I'd like to show you some things that I recommend. Wonderful. Are you ready ladies? Shall we do this together? Okay. All right. I'm going to just with our time that we've got today together, I want to introduce you to the spinal range of motion. And so I'm going to move away from the desk a little bit so you can see me. And I'm going to ask you to move your uh, chair back a little bit so that you can have space to move. And now for all of you watching and joining us in the AARP Florida membership, I'm so glad that you've chosen to have lunch with us today. I'm going to ask you to sit forward in your chair so that your bottom, your seat, is still solid, but that your legs come out more forward from the chair seat. Okay, the spine moves in six directions, and we're going to explore all six 
because if you do this every day, somewhere in your day, especially if you spend a lot of time sitting, if you're sitting at the desk or sitting at the table and doing whatever it is you're doing in your day, if you're doing a lot of time just sitting, we need to move our spine. Our spine helps the health of everything else. It helps our range of motion. It helps our attitude and our adjustment. It helps our low backs and our hips uh, feel better. It so it helps our mobility. Really, spinal movement, <clears throat> spinal health is so, so important. So we're gonna do move the spine in six directions. Here we go. We're sitting forward in the chair and the legs. Now take a look at your lap, look down at your legs. And I want your thighs, the bones, to be parallel-ish. Don't be touching, we don't need to be touching on the legs, but have them be parallel-ish when you look at your knees. And now lean over, put your hands on your knees and lean over and look down at your feet. And walk your feet forward enough that you see your entire foot and your ankle is below your knee. We spend a lot of time when we're sitting tucking our feet underneath us. And that's not healthy. That doesn't help the pelvis and the hips do what they need to do. So walk your feet forward enough that you can feel the feet firmly, feel the ankles. Now, if you push your feet into the floor, push your feet into the floor, can you feel your backside, your back line engaging and even raise up off the seat a little bit because your muscles, your gluteal muscles and your hamstrings are strong. So they're going to rise up to the occasion. All right, here we go. So now we're going to explore extension and flexion of the back. Inhale, and I want you to lift your chest, open up your lungs, lift your heart, and come forward with a really sway back, an arched back. This is the big breath in. Now to exhale, we're gonna curl. Curl and round and tuck and move your shoulders all the way back to the chair maybe. Oh, so good. Let's do four more. Inhale forward. Exhale, curl and tuck big. It's like a big hug, a big stretch, a big curling up. Mm. Three more. Inhale, bring the heart forward. Really exaggerate, show off the back pockets. Mm -hmm. Exhale, curl and tuck and roll. Oh. Two more. Inhale, long spine, sit up as tall as you can. When great grandma used to scold us at the table, she had a reason. Squeeze your elbows back. Feel that you're squeezing the back of your body. Mm. And then exhale, tuck and roll. One more, let's get in it. Let's get all the players on our team, all our body parts. If they're on the team, let's get them all off the bench. Come on, inhale, squeeze the elbows back. Exhale. Roll and tuck and reach the arms out. Oh, so good. Mm. Okay, that was two motions of the spine. That was forward and backward, extension and flexion. That's what we do with our body to straighten it, right? To stretch it straight and then to curl and round it. It's very important to do that. And you're gonna feel it, especially in your hips, in your pelvis, in your low back, especially if you have achy hips, or injured hips, or an achy low back, or a restricted low back. So you have to expressly practice this. You have to do it. Your body won't do it on its own. You have to coach it. Like, come on team, get off the bench, let's do this. I will also recommend that you sit on a firm chair. Sit on that good old fashioned straight chair, like that kitchen chair or dining room chair, that farmer's wooden bench, Perfect, that is so much better for us than the super soft, cushiony, delicious looking, you know, lovely office chairs or sofas or bucket seats where you just, ah, oh, you just kind of like curl up all in it. And then we wonder why we can't get up, we can't get out of it because it's not good for our back. It's not good for our low, uh, our pelvis, our hips, uh, and all of this musculature. It's just not good. No bueno. So come on, sit up firm, be tall, be in it. We're going to be in it. Since we're in it and you're with me, let's do two more movements, which is side to side. So here we go. Inhale, one arm up. And exhale, lean over, but now with the bottom hand, grab the chair so you don't fall out. No falling. 
and stretch here. Bend the arm at the elbow and lift that elbow. Lift the elbow up. And I know you can't see me very well on the screen. Lift that elbow up and feel that stretch. Can you feel it? Feel that whole stretch down that line. Oh, so the breathe. Breathe into your waistline. Breathe into those ribs. Mm, turn your ribs to look up at the sky, at the ceiling a little bit. Oh, so good. Wow, come out of it. Whoa, wiggle a little because you're going to feel now. So now the players on your team called your muscles and bones, the players on your team are going to start talking to each other. And sometimes they get a little grumpy because they feel like the other people didn't do their job. So that's where you got to wiggle a little, right? And this the siblings or the cousins fussing in the backseat of the car. So, all right, let's do the other side. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, lean over to the other side. Lean as far over as you can. Hold on, hold on to the chair. No falling out, Justine, don't fall over. <laughs> falling over laughing is one thing, but falling over stretching, that's not so good. No clunking on the head. Lift that elbow. Lift the elbow high up into the ceiling. Turn the ribs, look up at the ceiling. Breathe, breathe into those tight spaces. It's the breath. It is the magic that untangles all that stuck stuff. Oh, so good. Come on. Mm. We're going to visit. I know. One of the questions we might have, because I know I get neck pain from like yes. arthritis. Yes. So we have folks, right, joining us today with maybe arthritis in their shoulders or in their neck or maybe some pain in their back. Is there anything that they should not feel? <laughs> or should they not stretch too far, too hard right yeah. away? Maybe build? Great question. Absolutely. We want to go slowly. So listen to your body. Um, and anytime we do movement, uh, approach the movement with a curious, uh, open mind. So without an agenda, without an expectation of trying to look or do like anybody else is doing, always go really just kind of curiously, right? If we've discovered this fortress out in the woods that we call our body, this castle, Parts of it are, you know, they've been neglected. And so we don't know what's going to, if we open that door, it might not be on its hinges. So we all, we want to go snow, go carefully into that dark night uh, because this is, this is the chalice of our soul, but we need to make sure that it's still all together. So yes, go curiously, go slowly, go gently. Good question. I want to explore both sides again, and I'm going to talk about what we might be feeling in the neck. Thanks, okay. Linda. Let's do this again. Inhale, arms up. Big stretch. First, you stretch as high as you can, and then come down to the side. Now, while you're here, check your chin. Slide your ears back as if you're clearing your throat. Do you notice how you adjust your head when you clear your throat? <coughs> and it, it doesn't look attractive. I know you see it here, right? This, this double chin. But that is so good for protecting the back of our neck with our heavy head, especially okay. when we're leaning over. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so the other piece I wanna say, and I'm gonna show you on the other side, let's visit the other side. Inhale, both arms up, stretch, 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 stretch and reach, and then lean over. Now, here we are, and you're supporting yourself. Make sure you're not falling out of the chair. If you have a shoulder injury or shoulder limitation, and you can't raise the arm up over the head, then bring your hand just kind of to the shoulder as you can, and maybe just rotate the elbow up a little bit, and maybe it's just going to look like this. Maybe this is what it looks like to you because that's the stretch. But then I want you to lift your underarm. I want you to raise the ribs and still explore this long side stretch even if I can't raise or move my arm. Do you see that? Yeah. Feel how you can still get it by going straight into the underarm as if we're trying to lift the shoulder with our entire body. That's great. Mm, so good. Did that help give you some suggestions and some options? Because yeah. one of my injury, that injury, you can see the scar here. My arm was torn uh, as I uh, exited the aircraft. My arm got stuck in some of the equipment on the aircraft. And so I dangled in the, in the air and hit the side of the aircraft. There was a lot going on. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm only dealing with arthritis and no helicopter injuries. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have arthritis. So I completely get that, right? I understand that we've got to do sometimes as simple as some shoulder rotations, shoulder circles, back and forth. And again, remember, motion is lotion, it really is. It's like the old jalopies. I say mm -hmm. that endearingly because maybe some of you still have one in your driveway. But the old jalopies that we had to crank 
the engine first and let it warm up so that the oil was flowing through the engine before we began putting it in gear and uh, driving down the street man of three on a tree that's how i learned how to drive right mm -hmm. so uh yes and so this old engine this old chassis that we've got it's the same way we've got to crank it up a little bit we've got to warm it up warm up that engine we've explored four uh four motions of the spine and so now we're going to explore the last two but we're going to do it two different ways because there's a lot that's happening the spine moves forward and backward and it moves from side to side. It also rotates, but that has a lot going on when we talk about where our hips are versus where our shoulders are. So let's go into it gently. First, we're gonna go lightly. This is gonna be a light twisting, bringing your hands to your elbow, to your shoulders, I mean, and lifting your elbows and kind of raise them out. Sit up tall again, like great aunt, like great grandma or great aunt, great aunt Lulu used to tell us, right? And then very lightly, very lightly, gently, just twist and turn. Just explore, remember curiously. So we're not pushing anything, we're not forcing anything, we're just experiencing. What does it feel like? Can I feel it down into my waistline? Do I feel it in my hips? Do I feel it in my back? Is my back okay with that? Our low back is our defensive line. If you're a American football fan at all, right? That a defensive line and our low back never takes. So from a military perspective, since I was a soldier and a paratrooper, our low back is our security force. They're our perimeter security team. They never take a break and they get very put out if they feel like we're pushing things to the edge. So go slowly here. Now that we've done it for more than a minute, you might feel a, a little more comfortable, maybe, curiously, maybe go a little faster, see what that feels like. Maybe the elbows can turn a little more, the ribs and shoulders can turn a little more from side to side without knocking anything off the shelf. <laughs> Watch out, Justine. Watch out, Linda. <laughs> okay, how is that? Right? So this helps open up thoracic spine. Thoracic spine is the upper, the upper back. Thoracic spine really benefits as our ribs, the, the formation of our ribs will tell us that this kind of movement, horizontal movement, really helps open up our lung space, which helps us be healthy, right, in this era of germs and virus. So we want this movement, we want upper back movement, especially with connected, the relationship to low back. That's the relationship that is sometimes kind of testy. You know that. So that's why regular yoga is so good for us. Uh, if we had longer, I could play more, but we're gonna visit two more, uh, two more twists. This time when we rotate, it's gonna be slow motion and it's gonna be deep. This is gonna be like a, ugh, like we're getting it ugh, from the inside and really pushing as if, as if we're pushing against a refrigerator. Uh, so that's the, that's the inside grunt. Ugh. Come on, Justine, give me one. Linda, I know you've got it. <laughs> exactly. We want that. Ugh. We want that. Ugh. sound. It Come might on. sound like when we're getting out of bed in the morning. Oh, right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So that's the deep guttural movement that we're going to use. Now we're going to move the spine using four breaths to move the four different sections. We're gonna push into the sacrum, that's the hip area, right? The pelvis, the sacrum. Then we're gonna move uh, the belly, which is the, the uh, torso area, right? Torso and, and ribs area. Then we're gonna move the shoulders that kind of brings the upper back. Then the last piece, we'll move our chin and our head and we'll stay there for a breath. So here we go. Let the hands rest next to you. I like to turn my hands up uh, because Arms and hands like to reach, they like to go first. They don't wait, they are not patient, they don't take a turn. So I have to hold them in my lap to, until it's their turn. And it's not their turn until breath number three. So here we go, inhale, long spine, breath number one. And grunt and move just that low belly. And you're turning it to one side. We're gonna stay here now as if we're looking at our hip pocket. Stay here, breathe in again, number two. Now turn the ribs, turn the ribs and belly, turn the ribs and belly, yeah, so good. Inhale, number three. Now turn the shoulders, turn the shoulders, turn the shoulders and the upper back. Now the hands can go down. The front hand reaches on the leg, the back hand grabs the chair, 
Take a breath, number four. And check your chin, slide your ears back and turn and look. Turn your chin and your nose. Move your eyes to the corners of the socket and be here for two breaths. Press your feet into the floor. Bring the knees to the center line. Remember parallel knees. Oh, so good and come out of it slowly. This is a big, full, deep twist. It's a detox, so you're gonna feel it, right? You might feel it in your face, in your eyes, your heart rate, you're like, ooh, ah, a little like headed, a little flushing. That is good stuff. That is good stuff. This is us flushing out all the toxins. This is that compression that is needed for full circulation, for circulation, not just of our blood, but for circulation of our hormones, our endocrine system, our immune system, all of this, the glands, our organs, we, we need that. That's why this is so good for us. Let's do it in the other direction. Here we go. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, grunt, just move that low belly. Ooh. Yeah, good. Inhale, number two. Now turn the belly and the ribs. Inhale, number three. Turn the shoulders, the shoulders and the back. And now the hands can go down. Put the hands and arms in their place. Inhale, number four. Check your chin, slide your ears back and turn your gaze all the way to the corners. Can you look all the way behind you? Press your feet into the floor. Bring your legs to be parallel. Oh, so good. Come slowly forward, slowly. Oh, sit wow. for a minute. Yes, mm -hmm. sit for a minute and let the flushing happen. Let it move. Let it settle. Take a couple of breaths. So good. This has been the six basic movements of the spine. We did extension and flexion, extending it and curling it. We did side to side torso, stretching this long connection from elbow down the ribs into the waistline, into the hips. Nice long stretch that we have to feel on the side body that is also part of our core and our torso for our spinal health. And then we practiced rotation and we did it two different ways because we did lighter, right? It's kind of like that outside twisting uh, but then we did that deep inside spindle. So the outside didn't look like it was doing much and the effort was all that ugh, deep grunting on the inside. So good for us. Yay. And when you have time on another, let's do lunch. We'll do more yoga. I have more okay. ideas. I have a question. So yes. I've done a little meditation. Um, so why is it that people think that yoga is hard and that meditation is hard, when, especially when it's hard to steal yourself? Talk to us a little bit about that, if you would, please, or show us. Great, great question, Justine. Absolutely, you're right. So meditation, the word meditation, I think shuts a lot of people down, right? We think, oh, that's not for me. I can't do it. I'm not gonna sit cross-legged on the floor in some dark cave somewhere for hours and not eat. I mean, who, not, who doesn't wanna eat? I mean, come on, Justine, this is lunch. Let's do lunch, right? So meditation can be very off-putting. But um, another, another idea or the bigger practice of meditation is actually called mindfulness. And there is a lot to be said and some really fun exercises and practices we can do about mindfulness. Mindfulness-based stress reduction is, uh, I'm a professional resilience coach, and so that is one of the things I do for organizations and, and corporate groups or worksite wellness. So if there's another time that we can do lunch, we're going to talk just about mindfulness, and then we're going to practice some fun things because mindfulness uses all the senses. But for today... As part of mindfulness, there's a portion in meditation that is really just about calming the mind, just letting it, acknowledging that we all have a committee of voices in our head always going on, right? We've got all of those people, the librarian, the coach, the judge, the snark, the critic, right? All of that, everybody in our brain always telling us what we do. What are we trying to remember? Did we, or did we already do this? We're worrying about something. We're, you know, brainstorming. We've got the idea, good idea fairies in our head too, right? We have all of this happening. 
So much so that we get caught up in our head and we lose sense that really meditation just means being still, being here, being in the body, just these moments. So let's do this for two minutes. I would like to guide you in a breath. So when we're focusing on doing something, that is actually a form of meditation. For some people, walking, walking a labyrinth or walking around a block, walking laps on the track or in your neighborhood on the path, walking and paying attention to the fact that you're walking without paying attention to all of the chatter from the committee members in your head, walking is a lovely way of meditating. If we live by the beach on the, on the water, that's a fabulous way. You know that. That's why it feels so good. You can just be in it. You can hear feel the sun or the breeze, hear the birds or the dogs, right? And you're just, you're there, you're present. Uh, meditation is about calming and just putting time out, putting that committee in our brain in time out and just being where we are. So let's do this by breathing. And the breath that I'd like to introduce to you is called three-stage breath. Three-stage breath is really popular right now for respiratory therapists for all of us, especially over the age of 50, to keep our lungs healthy and clear and strong so that we can fight against any viruses that are out there for us for upper respiratory infections. So let's do good pulmonary health now with this three-stage breath. I'm gonna talk through it, but we're gonna end up doing it for about two minutes. So get comfortable. You don't have to sit at the front of your chair anymore if you wanna sit comfortably. And hope just, I just wanna say one thing. Please, if you have a question or comments, put it in the uh, chat. We just had a comment from Cheryl and Bill. This was a great experience, Bill, and I really needed this. Keep up the good work, keep going. I'm so glad, yay. All right, so hang in here with me. Let's do this for two minutes. I right. want you to breathe into your belly like it's a balloon, right? And when you take a breath in, and you let your belly get soft, so breathe it. Breathe in to your belly, and then keep breathing into your chest. Feel the ribs expand. Keep breathing now, sip all the way up to the throat. Sip, breathe as much as you can, more than you think, until you feel so full, and then pause, just for a couple heartbeats. Just pause, not even as long as I am, or longer, it doesn't matter, and then lean forward and blow out all the candles, a 100 candles on the cake, blow them all out. Blow out so firmly that you feel your whole torso go Ooh, to get that's why we practice the Ooh. you gotta get that diaphragm pushing up against the lower lobes of the lungs. Here we go. We're gonna do this some more. Inhale into the belly. It's the lower lobes of the lungs. Inhale, keep breathing. Up into the chest, the upper lobes. Keep breathing. Sniff, sip up into the bronchioles. Get everything full as full as you can of air. Pause for a few heartbeats as you're comfortable. And if you're not comfortable, don't hold it and just blow it all up. <sighs> Keep breathing. You know what to do now. Yeah. Into the belly. Into the chest. Up into the throat. Pause for just a heartbeat or two. And then blow out all the candles. The blowing out, the exhalation is the most important part here, ladies. So you have to get it all out. Our lower lobes of the lungs collect that heavy, stale, moist air, and that's where germs like to hang out and then grow and then fester and then get bad and ugly. So as we keep our lungs clear and clean and strong, then we have a better chance at living wholeheartedly and fully. Sonia, thank you so much. This has been tremendously helpful. I already feel it. I don't know about the voices in my head, but... Uh, <laughs> away. Is it, is it just me? But I, during, in the moment though, it, they stopped. So it's a matter of practicing the stretching, practicing the breathing, making sure we're in the moment. Are there any other tips you would give for self-care for folks during the stressful time? Be gentle with yourself. Yeah. It is stressful, right? So know it. Know it and own it. One of my favorite current uh, poets and philosophers, contemporary modern day uh, philosophers, Young Pueblo. You can follow him on Facebook and Instagram, Y-U-N-G, Young Pueblo. And uh, I have his book from a few years ago. And today, when I turned the page, the reading said, being honest with yourself mm -hmm. is an act of self-love. 
So be honest. It is hard. It is a struggle. It is heavy. So then do what you need to do for that self-care and take care of yourself. Do it. Prioritize yourself. They say in the airline, if you ever fl uh, fly and you hear the announcement that says, um, you know, if there's a crisis, if there's an emergency and the oxygen mask comes down, you have to put yours on first so that you can keep breathing so that you can help somebody else. Well, that's true. You have to take care of you first. You matter, so do it. Mm. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Dion, for your comments in the uh, chat. And again, thank you, Sonia. Oh my gosh, it was wonderful. And I just want to give a heads up. Um, Sonia ARP has additional um, times with Sonia for a whole series, I think, beginning um, in a week or so, going for three or four weeks. So please, 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 for six weeks. So you get to get more of Sonia again for free so you can practice more of this. The other part of that is everything that we do is recorded. So you can go back and look at it on the AARP Facebook page, uh, Elder Sources um, page, as well as YouTube, AARP's YouTube channel. So everything is recorded. So you can get this on demand. And so we are so grateful for you being here today. Thank you so much, Sonia. Again, Linda, any last words, Linda? Yes, we want to be sure to remind everybody to join us next month because we'll be back the third Thursday of December at 1230 for another wonderful Let's Do Lunch with AARP and Elder Source. And hopefully between now and then, Everyone would have practiced their stretches and their breathing, and they get through this, this holiday season with less stress with this help. Thank you again so much, and we'll see you next oh, week. ladies. I was so honored. Thank you for inviting me. This was a Absolutely. fabulous lunchtime. Let's do it again. Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> have a great afternoon and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Wash your hands and be safe. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Stay have good. a great day.